Hello, I'm Carl Seibert. Thanks for joining me. In this single topic quick tip video, we're going to talk about making global collections in Photo Mechanic Plus. So just about every digital asset management system, whether it's a dam for photographers or a dam for marketing departments or anybody else, features a concept of virtual folders. Some systems call these things collections. Some software calls them albums. Other software calls them light boxes or something else. But they all kind of work the same way. They're make-believe folders that you can organize pictures in without having actual copies of the pictures in an actual folder, cluttering up your whole machine and your whole workflow. A librarian would tell us that a collection is nothing but a list of photos. It's just a list of assets, and when you open it, the machine calls those assets and displays them in front of you, as this one is right here. Now, in Photo Mechanic Plus, we have the ability to use multiple catalogs as if they were one catalog and switch them on and off at our will, which is an interesting concept, and I don't think any other photographer's dam that I can think of has anything close to that. Generally, you're just in a catalog, and it takes an act of Congress to go to another catalog, and that's that. So while we've grown used to this ability in Photo Mechanic Plus to go from catalog to catalog and bridge them and whatnot as our heart desires, we may have discovered that in Photo Mechanic Plus, collections, our virtual folders, are specific to catalogs. Each collection is owned by a catalog, and it can only contain images that are in that particular catalog. Now, if you think about it, that's actually a pretty good way to approach this. And the developers of Photo Mechanic Plus clearly have thought through a lot of this stuff. If you have, for instance, a collection of bathroom mirror selfies in one catalog and you're working in another, let's say you're working in your client work catalog, I'm going to take a guess here and say that you probably don't want that bathroom mirror selfies collection popping up and being visible when you have that catalog turned off. Okay, well that's just great, but a lot of times we make collections of stuff that bridges our catalog, stuff that might live in any number of catalogs. Your portfolio is a prime example. So what if we want to put a picture in a collection and it turns out that that collection belongs to a different catalog? Well, let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and do that. Here we have a collection open, and this is a collection of beauty berries, and that's an actual thing. That's an actual kind of berry. And let's just say that we have this curated collection of beauty berry pictures, and we want to add to it as we go along. So we're looking at the collection, and if we look at our collections palette over here, we can see that our beauty berry demo collection is actually a member of, or belongs to, our Garden Pre-2020 catalog. And this is actually fairly realistic. One way you might divide catalogs is by date. You might have one for this year, one for next year, or whatever. So let's say that we've moved along, and it's the present time, and we want to add some more Beauty Berry pictures to this catalog. So I will pop over here to search, and I'll do a search to find some Beauty Berries. So I will type Beauty B-E-R-R. -R. Now, a common problem when we search for something like berries is that unless you're a lot more organized than I am, you're going to have pictures of a berry and pictures of multiple berries. And you may not have gone to the keywords to put in the opposite plural or singular form so that any given berry search, whether it's for a singular berry or plural berries, returns all your berry pictures. Okay. And we're really straying a little bit from our single topic of collections here. But this is kind of an important concept. When I search for berries, I want both plural and singular berries. Very, very fancy digital asset management systems. Whether they might be premises-based and cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, or whether they might be cloud-based and cost hundreds or thousands of dollars per month to use, have the ability to know about plural words. Such a fancy dam would be able to understand that berry and berries 
probably want the same set of pictures in return. And if it's fancy enough, it's not only going to do bury and berries, which is a case of a word ending in a Y or ending in IES, but it could probably do goose and geese as well. And certainly if we were looking for roses, I would just type rose and leave it at that. So the way Photo Mechanic works by default is that it searches for strings, not words. So that would be the equivalent in most dams of having a wild card at both ends of a word. So in most dams that don't cost a zillion dollars, I would think, oh, okay, I want berries or berries. So I will type B-E-R-R -R and wildcard the rest of the word. I don't have to do that in Photo Mechanic Plus. Photo Mechanic Plus acts as if there's a wildcard at both ends of every word unless I tell it not to. So here we go. I just type B-E-R-R. -R. I don't have to type a star or anything like that. And I'm going to get a whole bunch of beauty berry pictures. All right, so let's put ourselves in 2020. So we're going to be looking here for pictures that are in this catalog, Garden 2020. We already saw that our beauty berries collection was started with pictures that were in this one before 2020. So, okay, I have all my beauty berry pictures here. And I am going to turn on search only in this contact sheet and I'm going to do capture time is greater than or equal to 2020 and put myself at the present time. I know that I've said in the past that the time delimiter and the filter and browse section of Photo Mechanics Organizer interface is the greatest thing since sliced bread and the discovery of fire. And that's true and I still think that but I'm a little bit lazy so I did this right here in the search bar by just doing this capture time search. Okay. So now we're looking at our new beauty berry pictures. So let's do this one and this one. And we'll pop down to our collections. We'll make sure, yep, our beauty berry demo is active. And I'll do add to collection beauty berry demo. Ah, warning dialog. None of these items are in this collection's catalog. Would you like to add these items to both the collection and its catalog? Well, no, I really don't want to, because presumably if these berry pictures are living in a different catalog from those berry pictures, there's actually a reason for that, and I don't want to mix them up in the catalogs and make a muddle out of things. So, no, that just really won't do, but I really do want to have my collection of beauty berry pictures that goes across catalogs. What to do? Okay, this is really easy. We're going to invest about 30 seconds in fixing this problem. We go to catalog. We go to catalog management. We do new catalog. And we make a new catalog just for the purpose of housing global collections. And we'll call it whatever we want to do. We'll call it test collections catalog, whatever. I've already done this, so I'm going to cancel that. And that's all there is to it. We don't have to scan anything into the catalog. It's not a real catalog in the sense that it's holding any pictures. It's just going to exist for the purpose of doing global collections that span catalogs. And here we are. I've already done it, and I called mine ZZ Global Collections. And whoops, we'll just turn it on. And there it is, ZZ Global Collections. We'll make a collection in it, which we will call Beauty Berries Demo Global. That sounds good. All right, fine. So now, with my global collection active, I can go and I can add these pictures to it. And I get the same warning. None of these pictures are in this collection's catalog. Would I like to add them? Yes, I absolutely would, because this collection's catalog doesn't do anything but hold these global collections. And when I'm working generally, and I don't necessarily want to see my global collections, I can just turn the catalog off altogether, so I won't have to see any duplicate pictures. And that's pretty much all there is to it. In the case of this Beautyberry situation, 
we can go back to our original Beauty Berry collection and I'll turn I'll turn my global ones back on again. I'll make sure I have my global collection selected and go back to the pictures and just add them to Beauty Berry's Demo Global. And there we go. If I go to Beauty Berry's Demo Global, here are all of my Beauty Berry pictures from both catalogs. And I can turn the catalog that it lives in off and on at will, so I don't have to worry about seeing extra thumbnails from this collection popping up in other searches and just cluttering things up. Mind you, there's nothing wrong with when that happens. If you see an extra thumbnail because a picture lives in two different catalogs and you have them both turned on, it doesn't do any harm. You might get a warning if you try to act on that picture that one or another of the thumbnails is read-only, but that's fine because you can just move on and trust the Photo Mechanic Plus will actually do whatever you wanted to do to the original or actual picture and it will ignore the extra thumbnails. So this is a no-cost solution to this problem. It'd be kind of nice if there was something in the interface that you could take that would do this for you, but it's so easy and works so well, why bother? Let's let the developers develop features that we really need and this one that we can just make for ourselves is going to work just absolutely fine. There is one thing that I should point out. When you do this, this new catalog that you've made actually contains thumbnails for the pictures that are in it. That probably doesn't even matter in the slightest to you, but if you do zillions of collections, and you probably won't in Photo Mechanic Plus, but if you do do zillions of them, it's going to take up some space. Why do I say that you probably won't do that in Photo Mechanic Plus? Well, that's because Photo Mechanic Plus has a really good, really elegant system of tabs. And a lot of what people do with collections is temporary. Let's say they're just gathering pictures up. And let's say we wanted beauty berries and begonias. So we do a beauty berry search, put the pictures in a collection. Do a begonia search, put the pictures in a collection. And then we have all of those pictures together in a collection. We might still want to do that. It's possible. But more likely in Photo Mechanic Plus, we would just go over here to search and we would turn off reuse search tabs. And we would get a tab full of beauty berries and a tab full of begonias. We would do whatever we needed to with the pictures. Let's say gather them up and upload them to our agency or whatever. And we would move on. So as a result, in Photo Mechanic Plus, at least I don't make temporary collections for much of anything. Most people will probably use this workaround for things like their portfolio or things like a curated collection of beauty berry pictures over time, if that's what you really need. So there it is, a 30-second workaround that gives you the ability to have global collections in Photo Mechanic Plus. So as always, reach out in the comments down below or on the blog or in social media. Let me know if there are topics that you would like me to cover in the future. Let me know if you use this global collections trick. And on your way out, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button. That really helps with videos like this because it helps search in YouTube. And these videos are specific. People find them by searching. So that would be a good thing. Be safe out there, and as always, mind your metadata.